Normally the atria and ventricles are electrically isolated from each other by connective tissue, and the only means of electrical communication between the atria and ventricles is through the specialized conduction system of the heart. This conduction system includes the atrioventricular node, the bundle of his, and the bundle branch system. There is a physiologic delay of approximately from 120 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds between atrial and ventricular activation, represented by the PR interval. This delay allows the ventricles near optimal time to fill with blood during and just after atrial contraction. Excessive slowing or actual interruption of electrical signal propagation across the heart's conduction system is termed atrioventricular block or heart block. There are three types of atrioventricular block based on increasing severity of conduction impairment. First degree, second degree, and third degree AV block. First degree AV block is characterized by AP wave, usually sinus in origin, followed by a QRS complex with a uniformly prolonged PR interval greater than 200 millisecond. A more precise term for first degree AV block is PR interval prolongation because the signal is not actually blocked but rather is delayed. Second degree AV block is characterized by intermittently dropped QRS complexes. There are two major subtypes of second degree AV block. Mobitz type 1, which is also called Wenckebach phenomenon, and Mobitz type 2. With Mobitz type 1, the classic AV Wenckebach pattern, each stimulus from the atria encounters progressively more difficulty in traversing the AV node to the ventricles, the node becomes increasingly refractory. Finally, an atrial stimulus is not conducted at all, such that the expected QRS complex is blocked. This cycle is followed by recovery of the AV node, and then the whole cycle starts again. The characteristic ECG signature of classic AV Wenckebach block is of progressive lengthening of the PR interval from one beat to the next until a QRS complex is dropped. Of note, the PR interval following the non-conducted P wave, the first PR interval of the new cycle, is always shorter than the PR interval of the beat just before the non-conducted P wave. This can be a very useful means of differentiating Mobitz 1 block from Mobitz 2, in the case of Mobitz type 2 the PR interval is stable throughout the cycle. The number of P waves occurring before a QRS complex is dropped may vary. The nomenclature is based on the ratio of the number of P waves to QRS complexes in a given cycle. The number of P waves is always one higher than the number of QRS complexes. In many cases just two or three conducted P waves are seen before one is not conducted, like three to two, in other cases, longer cycles are seen. Wenckebach cycle also produces a distinct clustering of QRS complexes separated by a pause, the dropped QRS. Anytime you encounter an ECG with this type of group beating, you should suspect AV Wenckebach block and look for the diagnostic pattern of lengthening PR intervals and the presence of a non-conducted P wave. Do not mistake group beating due to blocked premature atrial complexes for second degree AV block. In premature atrial complexes, the non-conducted P waves come early, in the AV block the P waves come on time. Mobitz type 2 AV block is a rarer and more serious form of second-degree heart block. Its characteristic feature is the sudden appearance of a single, non-conducted sinus P wave without progressive prolongation of PR intervals and the noticeable shortening of the PR interval in the beat following the non-conducted P wave versus the PR before the non-conducted P wave. A subset of second-degree heart block occurs when there are multiple consecutive non-conducted P waves present, for example P to QRS ratios of 3 to 1, or 4 to 1. This finding is often referred to as high-degree, or advanced, AV block. It can occur at any level of the conduction system. Third-degree or complete AV block. First and second degree AV heart blocks are examples of incomplete block because the AV junction conducts at least some stimuli to the ventricles. With third degree or complete heart block, no stimuli are transmitted from the atria to the ventricles. Instead, the atria and ventricles are paced independently. The atria may continue to be paced by the sinoatrial node or by an ectopic focus or by atrial fibrillatory activity. The ventricles are paced by a nodal or infranodal escape or backup pacemaker located below the point of block. The resting ventricular rate with complete heart block may be 30 beats per minute, or lower in some cases, or as high as 50 to 60 beats per minute. This situation, 
when there is no crosstalk between the atria and ventricles and each of them is driven independently by a separate pacemaker at a different rate, is one example of AV dissociation. In the setting of complete heart block, AV dissociation almost always produces more P waves than QRS complexes. AV dissociative rhythms is not unique to complete heart block. For example, complete heart block may also occur in patients whose basic atrial rhythm is flutter or fibrillation. In these cases, the ventricular rate is very slow and almost completely regular. There are three key ECG features of complete heart block with sinus atrial activity. P waves, upright in lead 2, are present, with a relatively regular sinus rate that is typically much faster than the ventricular rate. QRS complexes are present, with a slow, usually near-constant, ventricular rate. The P waves bear no relation to the QRS complexes, thus, the PR intervals are variable.